Okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another NBA video for Looty Bros Entertainment. It's your boys, the Looty Bros, and we're here. Um, we got uh, oh, uh, day three of uh, the opening regular season. Uh, a lot of nice, interesting matchups we're going to talk about here. Uh, but first, let me get some out of the way. Big bro, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing good, little bro. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm ready to you know start talking about some ball. <laughs> All right, so we got a couple of nice, nice matchups here for you guys. We have first game at 12, uh, 12 p.m. Uh, Central Time. Um, we have Miami Heat versus the Denver Nuggets. What are you looking forward to in this matchup? Okay, uh, believe it or not, something that I'm looking forward to. I don't know if it's going to have anything, you know, to do with the actual game. But Titus keeps showing me highlights of Bull Bull. Like he's his new favorite player. Coming down, hitting threes, blocking shots, altering the game. The Nuggets think they have a superstar in the making on their hands with him. So um, I'll just keep my eyes open and, and I'll be interested in checking out the box score uh, for Bull Bull. But uh, the big things I'm actually looking for in that game are going to be, you know, Jimmy Butler coming back. Um, uh, Nikola Jocic for the Denver Nuggets lost a ton of weight. I don't know if you've seen some mm -hmm. pictures of him, but he lost seen, like yep. maybe 30 or 40 pounds. Um, I wonder if that's going to have any impact for him uh, coming back and starting to play. I mean, he's a he's a big guy. You know, he's a big physical guy, even though he can step out and shoot the long ball. Uh, I want to see if that's, you know, losing weight in a game, in a sport like basketball, losing weight typically helps you, you know, in the long run. It, help, it can help your mm -hmm. career. It can take a lot of pressure off your knees. So I'm interested to see how he comes back. These two teams have uh, close records. Um, the Miami Heat is 41 and 24, and the Denver Nuggets was 43 and 22. So I mean, I think we're going to be in for a very interesting game uh, once these two teams tip off. Mm -hmm. What about yeah, you? I agree. I'll pass back to you. Yep, yep, I agree. I agree. Uh, I'm interested to see what Jimmy Butler is going to do. Um, I mean, I'm not too so. I mean, did this Bobo even play in during right before the restart? You know what? I don't. I don't know if he's getting any time, but apparently he's been getting some minutes. Like I said, I, I got, I got a text message with a highlight reel for him. You know, and he came in and, you know, looking okay. kind of surprisingly good. So. I mean, all right. I mean, let's. I mean, that was a scrimmage game, so we don't know if he's gonna get the amount of time. But, um, you know, Nik Nikola Jokic, uh, you know, losing that weight can, you know, help with quickness and, mm -hmm. you know, for durability. So that's that's that is a thing to look at. Mm -hmm. uh, second game at. Uh, we got Utah Jazz and OKC Thunder going at it. Um, mm -hmm. OKC is looking like was looking really really tight. You know, Chris Paul revived his revived his career with them, um, and he's looking strong. Utah Jazz they got um, uh, a little friction with the uh, two stars on the team. What are you mm -hmm. looking at to with this matchup? Well, I mean, I've got to sing the praises of Chris Paul uh, over and over again. Um, I, I didn't think I didn't think he was going to even play one game for OKC when they first made the trade um, for him to come over. But he has those guys buying in and playing well. And, um, you know, it's, it's a real testament to him. It, it is a real, I mean, now, now basketball is not a singular sport. So of course he's getting help from the rest of the guys on his team. But I mean, that's Chris Paul. That's all Chris Paul mm -hmm. leading the way with the, with the Thank roster God. of guys. Yeah, with the roster of guys that, you know, you're, you're not expecting. I was definitely wasn't expecting mm -hmm. them to look like this at 40 and 24 coming back in uh, off the restart. Utah Jazz. Uh, I think Utah Jazz were right where they were. They were at, what, fourth place in the West uh, mm -hmm. coming into this restart. And I think that they're right where they're supposed to be. Donovan Mitchell, I know, um, I think I might have him a little bit higher on my list than you do. I think that he's a star in the NBA. Um, Rudy Gobert is a defensive anchor and he can really hold it down for you. I definitely think that the Utah Jazz um, can make some noise in this run, but I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, this might be the year for Chris Paul to finally get a monkey off his back and go you know, really, really deep into the playoffs. Now, you know, there's still some teams ahead of the ahead of them in the Western Conference. But the thing is, is with this restart, it's wide open. It's mm -hmm. really wide open for all the teams that are coming in to have an opportunity to get some success. So and I think that this game right here actually showcases showcases how wide open and even it's going to be. Yep, I agree. I agree with you. Uh, you know, I'm looking. That's going to be a game I'm going to have my eye on. Um, another game I'm going to have a real close attention is New Orleans Pelicans and Los Angeles Clippers. Mm -hmm. 
So I believe this is going to be the, the Clippers' second game, and they will not have uh, Lou Williams and I think Harold as well. Mm-hmm. So they're going to be a little small going in, and they're going to have to be dealing with Zion. So what are you looking forward to with that? Well, the Clippers have predicated themselves on depth this season, um, trying to be a deep team, trying to be able to plug in pieces, plug and play basically. But losing two guys like Lou Williams and Montrez Harrell is going to hurt because those guys are combining for almost 40 points a game for you. And that's your bench. That's Mm -hmm. your true bench right there is those two guys. And without them, you know, for this first part of the the playoffs, look, I don't care if you have Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, you don't want to end up with an unfavorable matchup at the beginning of the actual playoffs after this eight game, you know, play in, you don't want to end up with an unfavorable matchup. So you're supposed to do what you have to do to ensure that things get taken care of, you know, uh, uh, during these eight games, this this is your regular season. These eight games are your regular season. So you got to make sure you're taking care of business. Now on the other side of the ball, I hope Pelicans win. I've, I've said it before. I'm, I I'm high on Zion. I'm very high on Zion. I'm really looking forward to him, um, and I hope that the, the Pelicans are able to get in in this uh, little uh, eight-game play-in. I hope that they're one of the teams that make it in. So I'm really rooting for New Orleans to win every game uh, out of these eight, you know, possible possible games they're going to play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, New Orleans is going to be battling because they're trying to make the playoffs. So they're going to be coming out hungry and aggressive, and the Clippers are going to have to respond. Um, you know, Zion is going to be a handful if you don't have someone to rebound for you. And I know they still they got they got they have Joakim, so maybe he's going to get a little extra time now. But uh, Zion is just, just a monster. Okay, right. that's just what he is. Um, well, you know, real next, quick too, before we move, before yeah. we move on, the Pelicans actually. I mean, you have Brandon Ingram. Let's let's start yeah. seeing some uh, of the other yeah. of these guys. I mean, you have Brandon Ingram. You have you know Drew Holiday. You know, you've got you've got a little collection of talent that is buying in and playing well. And that's something that I was really liking uh, when Zion joined the team. You could tell that they're trying to figure things out. But once he got rolling, they were really starting to learn how we could play together. Lonzo Ball has I'm not a huge Lonzo Ball fan, but he came into his own and he can play. I think him and Zion have really have something special if they can just dial in and work hard. You know, and this is going to be a big uh, test for them is going to be facing the Clippers. Because, I mean, Kawhi is going to come ready to play. He's going to come ready to play, and so is Paul George. I, I don't think I don't think Kawhi is going to do any, any load management over these course of these next eight games, but we'll, we'll see. You know, we'll, yeah, see. we'll see. We don't know about that. Yeah. We don't know what he'll do. But, um, you know, I'm glad you mentioned Brandon Ingram because he was an all-star this year. He's averaging 24, uh, you know, six rebounds, four assists. You know, he, he's really uh, improved since his time in uh, the Lakers. Mm-hmm. So, uh, moving on here, we got Philly against Indiana. Um, I mean, I like Philly. Yeah. I like, I like Ben Simmons. I like Joel Embiid. Um, they, they have some, some – I heard that Brett Brown has uh, moved uh, uh, Ben Simmons down to the dunker spot now. So, he, so he's not going to be running, I think, the point – as much for their offense so i mean they're i I mean they're trying to do something but i mean what are you looking forward to this matchup well that's some that what you just told me is some news to me uh remember folks uh little bro and i we don't the saint the saint choreographed the saint scripted we sit down and we just give each other off the cuff thoughts uh about the game so i didn't know that ben simmons had been moved from out of that point guard slot so who's bringing the ball up do we know well, I think I mean he's going to be running it, but he'll still be in the he'll, he'll be in the four spot. So I'm not sure if it's going to be like a point um, forward situation. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure okay. if they're bringing in another guard to you know shoot from the perimeter. I'm not sure how their lineup's going to work, but um, that's that's up for Brett Brown to decide now. Okay. Well, you know what? That's a wrinkle. That's a new wrinkle, and yeah. I, I would want to sit down and watch that because I, I will be honest. Uh, if I take off my, you know, overview of the NBA hat and I put on my Celtics hat, having Ben Simmons at the point guard is not something that I'm afraid of. Having him playing a power forward spot and then bring in another guard to help facilitate and shoot, that is something that's a little bit scarier to me. So mm-hmm. now I can look at this game with, with, you know, different eyes, putting back on my, you know, NBA overall analyst hat. I can look at this game with different eyes and see, you know, what are some potential matchups and how is it going to play out by moving him to that spot? Indiana Pacers and Philadelphia have the same record at 39 and 26. 
So, mm-hmm. you know, this is going to be, I mean, t- this uh, third night of the season looks like it's going to be a night of very close, exciting games of teams that were evenly matched. So this is going to give us some really good, exciting basketball that is going to have to be a measuring stick for, for teams to see where are we at, you know, a couple games mm-hmm. left going into the playoffs. Yep. So I'm interested to see. Yeah, Victor Oladipo, is he, he's playing, right? He's, uh, is he showing up? Mm-hmm. I believe he's there, but I'm not. I'm not certain if he's playing. Okay, so that's going to be a big thing for Indiana. They need Victor Oladipo. They 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 need that guy to be there. So um, we'll have to do the Ludi Bros. Will have to do a little research on that. So the next time we sit down to talk with you guys, we can make sure we have that uh, information. These these are all moving parts. You know, with this NBA thing, these are all moving parts coming into the bubble. So okay, so that was the fourth game, and then what what do we got for the fifth game? All right, so last, last game, we got Los Angeles Lakers versus Toronto Raptors. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we it's got, a big game. Yep, it's the champs against the potential champs. Okay. That's a big we, game. We, we, yep. I'm definitely looking forward to the matchup. Um, hey, look, the, the Raptors, they're the defending NBA champion. That's true. They, they lost a lot when they lost Kawhi Leonard and Danny Green. They lost a lot. However, they have responded. The rest of those guys on the team have responded as champions should, and they came out trying to prove something to the rest of the NBA. That being said, and I'm glad that they won last year. I'm glad they beat the Golden State Warriors. That being said, this team is not the same. This team will not make it out of the Eastern Conference, and I don't think this team will make it to the Eastern Conference as constructed. I'm looking for the Lakers to get the win here. I'm looking for the Lakers to keep working on greasing things up, getting things rolling for the playoffs. And I'm looking for the Lakers to get the win. What about you? Uh, yep. You know, I, I'm with you. I have Lakers winning this game. Look, the Toronto Raptors have a nice, a solid, solid playoff team. Solid team. Shockham, um has, has improved yet again. Mm-hmm. He should be most year being considered. Well, he won it last year. So maybe that'd be someone else. But he's still, he's improved. Um, they got some other boys on there, but I think I believe that Marcus is hurt, and I don't know what the extent of the injury is, so that's going to hurt them um, on the defensive side. But um, they're a nice team, but like I, I see them exiting in the second round. Right, me too. Yeah, I, I see just, them exiting I mean, in the second round. It's no disrespect or anything, but I don't think they have what I. These other teams that just have better their players, their best players are better than Shiakam. Mm-hmm. If Shiak, I mean, and if, if Shiakam is is as their quote unquote best player, you know they got they have LeBron James or let me go to the Eastern Conference. Giannis is there. Jason Tatum is there. Uh, I mean, I don't know about. Well, I think Philly could beat them. So I'll say Ben Simmons and Embiid are there. Are there? Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot of better uh, talent um, in the Eastern Conference that's just slightly better than. Uh, than Shiakam. Yeah, I agree I mean, with you. Nick Nurse is a good coach, you know, but uh, there I see them um, exiting the second round, right. probably no, in I, six games. I definitely agree with you. I definitely agree with you. They they can't beat they can't beat Boston. They can't beat the Bucks. You know, those no. are the two teams that in a seven game series are going to beat those guys. Yeah. And, and and depending and depending on how Philadelphia plays out, because like I said, I had no idea with the Ben Simmons move. Depending on how Philadelphia plays out, they can't beat Philly either. I, I agree with you mm-hmm. on that. They're the fourth best team in shoot. And also another team that we I might want to throw out there who you're a little higher on this team than I am, but I think it would be a great matchup is the Miami Heat. I think that that would be a good battle between Toronto Raptors and the Miami Heat. Yep. Um, the Raptors are 46 and 18, so they got a few games on Miami. But uh, I mean, I think that would be, I think that's a more comparable team when you break it down to an overall talent and on a seven game series. Now, you mentioned Marcus Soul being hurt. If Marcus Soul is hurt, I'm going to look at this from two from two uh, ways. The, the, the matchup on the first, on August 1st with the Lakers, if you don't have Marcus Soul, you will lose because the Lakers have big bodies and, and they've got length. And they're going to be able to out rebound you, and they're going to be able to defend. And and for the longer picture, if you don't have Marcus Soul for an extended period of time, you show going to lose when it comes time to match up with teams that have Giannis coming down the middle, and you have Joel Embiid, and then you have the Celtics who have more depth. So mm-hmm. those those factors are crucial for Toronto. If yeah. any l- last year they had a team first approach around Kawhi Leonard, it wasn't just the Kawhi show. It definitely wasn't just the Kawhi show. When we sat down, and looked at the numbers of them, yeah. and the unlike finals. some some other people around here who want to say Kawhi did everything, that's not true. <laughs> a lot of guys stepped up. Um, Fred Van Beet stepped stepped up big. Uh, Pascal Siakam stepped up big. I'm not going to take away from him. 
uh, let's see, Serge Ibaka stepped up big, Marcus Sewell stepped up big, and Lowry stepped up big in that NBA Finals last year to win the title. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, I'm glad for them that they did. But at the end of the day, when you take away what Kawhi Leonard was bringing to the table, and now you've got these other pieces here who don't have that one focal point around them to kind of uh, somewhat bring them all together like, you know, like glue, it's not going to work for you. And that's the thing with the Raptors this year. It's been a great story. It's been a great ride. But you know what? If you wanted to get another title, you should have hoped that Kawhi was going to stay. Mm-hmm. You know, and just to add on to that, even if Mark Gasol is there, there's nobody. And you know what? And our dad likes to say, oh, well, Kawhi funneled them to the middle. Okay, that's fine. But there's nobody there to funnel Giannis to the middle anymore. Right. If that's yeah. if that's what you want to call it. For, for well, I mean, I, I, I do. I mean, I, I say that too. Yes, Ka- Kawhi funneled Giannis into the bigs. It's it's great to have that that body, that agile body, who's who's got some long arms and some big hands the way that Kawhi does. He can get out on the perimeter and he can do that. But when he's sending them into these big men who are no slouch, Marcus Sewell's a defensive player of the year. Serge Ibaka's mm-hmm. a defensive player of the year. You got two big defensive player of the year monsters, you know, that you're funneling these guys into. So when you go to do something like that and then those monsters are no longer there and you lost your perimeter defender, Siakam can't do that. And they lost Danny Green, who's another perimeter defender. Let's not get it twisted. You know, he's a three-point shooter. His shot wasn't on in that finals, but he's a perimeter defender. That's what he's he's known for is uh, that perimeter D. So, I mean, it's just, you know, it's something that, you know, you have to look at a team. And I'm not hating on the Raptors. I like those guys. I'm happy for them that they won the title last year. But, um, I mean, and I expect them to come out and fight. You know, I'll give that to them. They will come out and fight. But um, in the end of the day, in a seven-game series, everything changes. Everything takes a different shape. And that's where, you know, it's going to stop for them. I agree. I agree. So, I mean, this looks like a great – I'm looking at the schedule, too. This looks like a great night of matchups. Can't wait. Five great games. A couple days away. A couple days – or, yep, a couple days away. Five great games between teams with almost similar records. The only teams that don't is the Pelicans and the Clippers. However, like I said, you're about to minus about, you know, nearly 40 points a game from the Clippers with Harrell and uh, and Lou Williams not being available. That's going to lead for something interesting. So let's uh, let's finish this video off with some pick'ems. Uh, who you got in Miami and Denver? Mm, you know, those teams are going to battle, but I'm going to pick Miami to steal the win here. Okay. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go with Denver. Denver, well, they don't have home court because we're all playing in the bubble. But I'm going to go mm-hmm. ahead and I'm going to rock with Denver Nuggets on this one. Who you got uh, between Utah and OKC? Mm, you know, this one's another toss-up. Mm, yeah, like I said, all these I'm teams have pick... similar records. They're all similar. Yeah, yeah, have been similar teams, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick uh, the point god to lead his team to victory. Okay, so you're going – okay, not, this is this is great. This is great, Ludi Bros. Uh, you're picking OKC. You know what? I've got Utah Jazz. I think Utah Jazz are going to go ahead and get the win in this one. Who you got with Pelicans and Clips? Mm, you know, I don't – I want to pick the Pelicans, but I'll take the Clippers. I, I know they're missing some things, but I feel like Kawhi Leonard will find a way to help his team win that game. Okay. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to continue the theme. I'm going to throw my hat in with the Pelicans. My heart is saying throw my hat in with the Pelicans. And out of my mind, I'm going to say the Pelicans are going to come in young, hungry, and they're going to run as fast as they can and jump as high as they can. And they're going to do a little surprising for the L.A. Clippers. Who you got with Philly and Indiana? Mm, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I got to check if Victor Oladipo is playing. But if he's not, I'm picking Philly to win that game. I agree. Philly, with no Victor Oladipo, Indiana would be done. And Philadelphia, I'm very interested to see the move. I'm very interested mm-hmm. to see the move uh, with Ben Simmons uh, no longer being at the point guard. But uh, I'm going to agree with you and say Philly. And our final matchup of the night, we've got Lakers and Raptors. Who you got? I'm picking King James, man. Yep. Okay. My, me too. Yeah. Hoping the Lakers win. All yep. right. Hey, well, thank you guys for tuning into this video. We're checking out. We're probably going to check out the first week of the NBA schedule, or should we might even continue just bringing this to you guys because we love talking ball. Uh, mm-hmm. night, night in and night out, we'll keep bringing it to you guys. Come, at, Hey, check out our picks. See what we got right. Comment down below. Let us know what you think. Uh, if your team is going to be playing that night or if you want to jump in on our pick-ems, and let us know what you think, who you think is going to come up with some wins on the 1st, August 1st. Um, if you have not 
done this yet, please do it now. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. We've got lots of content coming for you and we're covering all kinds of different angles. We've got fun card games. We've got gaming. We've got sports. We're bringing it to you guys from a lot of different angles here at Ludi Bros Entertainment. So we will see you guys in the next video. Still talking ball.